Pokemon fans, it's Mashi here. Today we're going to be discussing something a lot of Pokemon fans don't fully understand. The chronological order the Pokemon games take place in. You see, most people figure that the events of the Pokemon games just take place in the order the games are released in, but that's not the case. The games actually take place in a different order, and today I'm going to explain what that order is and why they all fit where they do. Understanding the timeline of course doesn't have much impact on whether or not you enjoy the games, but it can be a fun little puzzle for fans to try and put together and place the games in a chronological, coherent timeline. Let's not waste any time here with explanations, though, and get started. It starts off simple enough, with Generation 1 at the beginning of the timeline. In this game, Red and Blue are 11 years old, according to the instruction manual, and only 151 species of Pokémon have been discovered. This changes slightly in the remakes, Fire Red and Leaf Green, in which more than 151 species are known to exist, but just aren't native to the Kanto region. Generation 2 takes place exactly three years after the events of Generation 1, as Red's actions from the previous game are referenced multiple times as the boy from three years ago. Red and Blue also make appearances this time around, now 14 years old each. Many changes to the Kanto region are visible, though some don't make a lot of sense. You see, the anime and game canons are decidedly two different universes, and what's true for one isn't necessarily true for the other. If you need evidence of this, one need not look any further than the numerous times Ash has completely defied in game logic to win a Pokemon battle. But in the game version of Cinnabar Island, there's no volcano in sight. Not even in the remake. The only time there's a volcano on Cinnabar Island is in the anime, where Blaine's gym is built inside an active volcano. Yet in the Generation 2 games, Cinnabar Island has been destroyed due to a volcanic eruption. Now, I'm no geologist, but I'm pretty sure there needs to be a volcano for there to be a volcanic eruption. The island wasn't even on any kind of mountain that could have been mistaken for a dormant volcano. It was totally flat! What gives, Game Freak? Anyway, Generation 3 is where things started to take a non-linear turn. You see, in Generation 2, the way trading between the two generations worked was via a machine called the Time Capsule, indicating that the Pokémon were not only traveling between the games and traded, but also traveling through time. When Generation 3 was released, and subsequently Fire Red and Leaf Green came out, the games could trade between one another via the machine on one island, which was not indicated to use the same technology as the Time Capsule in Gen 2. For this reason, many fans believe Generations 1 and 3 take place at the same time at the start of the timeline. It's not clear where the GameCube titles Coliseum and XD fit into the timeline, if they do at all. XD takes place 5 years after Coliseum, but both are able to communicate with Gen 3 without a time capsule. And given that that's the most evidence there is for Gen 1 and 3 to take place at the same time, it's definitely significant. Most fans either put Coliseum after Gen 3, and then XD after Gen 2, or omit them from the timeline altogether. Aside from these two games, the other spin-off games seem to exist in a universe entirely outside the main series games. For example, Pokemon Conquest takes place in feudal Japan, and yet a Mewtwo exists, when Mewtwo is supposedly created in a laboratory slightly before the Gen 1 story takes place in a modern setting. There are references to the Sinnoh region in Pokemon Ranger, though, so some speculate it's supposed to take place in the same canon as the main series games. But anyway, getting back to the timeline, that puts Gen 1 and 3 at the beginning, followed by Colosseum, followed by Generation 2, and then followed by XD Gale of Darkness. Gen 4 saw the release of Diamond and Pearl, as well as the release of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. The Red Gyarados is mentioned right at the start of Diamond and Pearl, indicating that the story of Don and Lucas begins immediately after Gen 2's protagonist's adventures at the Lake of Rage. Johto and the inhabitants thereof are mentioned multiple times throughout the Sinnoh region, and Jasmine herself makes an appearance in both Sunny Shore City and in the contest, competing with her Steelix. It's pretty clear that Gens 2 and 4 are meant to take place at the same time, but because Jasmine trades the Steelix 2 in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, the events of Gen 2 are believed by many to take place slightly after the events of Gen 4. This contradicts the theory that the game picks up after the Lake of Rage, however, so there's no real consensus here. Overall, though, it is believed that Gens 2 and 4 take place at about the same time, if not slightly staggered one way or the other. It's also entirely possible that the events of Gen 4 begin after the Lake of Rage, but that they conclude before the protagonist of the Gen 2 games reaches the point in the post-game where Jasmine trades away her Steelix. Generation 5 takes place at the current end of the timeline, with the first games, Black and White, logically coming before their sequels, Black and White 2, which is stated within the games themselves to take place two years later. The rocket grunt that appears in Generation 2 in Cerulean City makes a cameo here, having retired and started a family. Given the age of the rocket grunt's son, a notable amount of time has passed since the events of Gen 2 and 4. However, Caitlyn from the Battle Castle in Sinnoh returns as a member of the Unova Elite Four, and doesn't appear to be too much older. Based on this information, fans speculate that about five to seven years have passed between Gens 4 and 5, 
but not any more than that. In Black and White 2, the Pokemon World Tournament sees many older characters return, notably Red and Blue from Gen 1. Assuming the fans are correct and 7 years have passed between Gen 4 and Black and White 2, this would put their ages at 21. So let's recap here. At the beginning of the timeline is Gen 1. Though there's not a lot of evidence to support it, most fans place Gen 3 here too. Then Colosseum, followed by Gens 2 and 4. Though it's not clear if they take place at exactly the same time, if one falls the other, and if so, which falls which. Then XD, Gale of Darkness, and finally Black and White, followed two years later by Black and White 2. So where will X and Y fit into this timeline? Well, of course you won't know until you play it. But it'll be interesting to see if any characters make cameos, but tie it into the events of other games. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see. Thanks for watching, and stick around for more Pokemon videos. See ya!